Hi, I'm Dr. Benicia Tapia here at Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, uh, Sustaining Fire Ministries program, and this is part two. I have a special guest here. If you if you don't, you have to see part one, but I have Evangelist Art Blajos here, and he's going to give part two of his testimony, and I'm telling you, I've had a lot of testimonies on here, and they've been powerful, but today, man, I was like, wow, it blew me away, and I know that God is going to use him to touch you and to change you and to bring deliverance to you. You know what? Those scales are going to come off your eyes today. Those ears are going to open. Those chains are going to fall. That yoke's going to break. Those bands of wickedness are going to loose. Those burdens are going to come off your shoulder. God's going to move in a mighty way. And I just want to introduce him now, Evangelist Art Blajos. God bless you, doctor. It's good to be here uh, again. Yes. Amen. I'm so excited. And, uh, I thank God uh, for my salvation. It's been, it'll be 34 years next month in March. And what a journey it's been and uh, what a God we serve. And I thank God for my service. I just love doing this. What I do is uh, giving God the glory and shaming the devil. Hallelujah. And two, I was talking earlier, part one, as Dr. Uh, Benicia mentioned, uh, the testimony really, really of the Lord and uh, called Blood In, Blood Out. Not the movie. This is... Uh, my story, and then also there's a drama. Maybe some of you have seen the drama. The same name, Blood In and Blood Out. It says, to join the mafia, you kill. To lead the mafia, you die. And it's endorsed by our pastor and founder, Sonny Artizoni, and also Nikki Cruz, a great friend of the ministry. And uh, I just love doing this and uh, just uh, uh, putting some of you who don't know and making it available to you, the the awesome uh, outreach, the ministry, you know, that God has uh, released uh, specifically for you, for the hardcore, the fellas, the foolish men and women, those that caught up in impossible situations that you think you've done too much, said too much, you know, you can't go back, even if you're right now tipped up, you know, and, you know, and a five star, whatever this, and, you know, that is a lie, you know, God is able to break every bondage and every chain, you know, and I'm here to challenge you too, if you're deep in the mix and you, you want to, like I meet at one time, I wanted to too, get out, but I thought this, you can't get out, it's blood in, blood out, you know, and we had a saying back in the day, no, hay la puerta, I couldn't find the doors, you know, but I'm here to tell you, there is a door, there is a way, no matter what you've done. I shared a little bit in, uh, in the other segment of how God um, reached me and some of the stuff I went through and I'm sure some of the stuff that you're going through right now. Maybe a different time, uh, but, you know, sin is sin. Pain is pain. Shame is shame. Hurt is hurt, you know. Joy is joy. Relief is relief. Good news to a dying man is that he's not going to die. Good news to a dying woman that she's going to live. And that's what I wanted to bring here today, uh, good news uh, to you out there, but especially good news to the fellas, uh, good news to the folios, the thugs, the players, the writers, whatever you call yourself. This week is good news, amen? Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And two, I just want to just, before I go jump into my testimony, I want to share a story of uh, of. A character in the Bible, one of my favorite characters, this guy's name is Barabbas, okay? And uh, Barabbas was a criminal, oh, you can read it in the book of Acts, you know, 26. And uh, he was the leader, he was in prison. Uh, there was a time that he su was supposed to die, but you know the story, Pilate uh, uh, had the, you know, the power then, you know, under Rome, he was there, Pilate, the governor over Judea, Jerusalem, but uh, he was empowered by Rome to release people. And uh, Jesus was, of course, on trial. And Jesus Christ, uh, you know, was there in front of Pilate, and he had a choice. And uh, the people wanted to release Barabbas and crucify Jesus. Jesus Christ uh, was on his way to Cal uh, Calvary, uh, the hill Golgotha, and they were shouting, crucify him, crucify him, talking about Jesus, and release Barabbas. In my Bible, it says, release Barabbas. 
who was in prison for murder, who was in prison, uh, should have died. And there was three crosses. Listen to me. Those three crosses were for the two, his two crimes and him. But he was released at the last minute by Barabbas. Who took his place? Jesus Christ. Now that day, 2,000 years ago, nobody knew better than Barabbas. You know, he didn't even know probably who that guy was on the cross was. He probably thought he was a bad dude who did something bad to Rome. You know, everybody hates him, spitting on him, you know, cursing him. He must be a bad, hated person, you know. But listen, very real quick. If anybody knew that day that he belonged there, that that man, whoever he was, did not belong there, was Barabbas. That was my cross. That was my gas chamber. That was my elected chair. I belong there. That's what the cross was. Capital punishment. That's what sin is. Capital punishment. Death. You know, who deserved death? I deserved death. Barabbas deserved death. He knew it better than anybody else. And let me tell you this, and then I want to conclude with my testimony, the highlights. He must have been looking there and, wow, who is this dude, right? He knew, you know, that was my cross. Whoever that dude is up there, uh, he took my place. Now listen to this. I want to leave you with this and then go into my testimony. Three days later, can you imagine? All the thugs and familiars, who's a criminal? They told him, Abe, hey, Barabbas, check this out. Isn't that about the right thing? <laughs> that dude, Jesus, they're all saying he's alive, you see? Well, wait a minute. That weird dude who took my place on the cross, he's dead. Now he's alive. Barabbas says, you know, that's what they're saying. He's alive. That Jesus Christ is alive. I believe Barabbas is in heaven. With that much evidence, that, you know, the biggest event in history, that had to haunt him every single waking moment. And I believe he had to cry out. Just like the other thief on the cross. Jesus, forgive me. I believe he did. In fact, when I get to heaven, I'm going to ask for Barabbas. What's up? Where is he? My testimony here. I thank God for my salvation. As I said, next month it will be 34 years. And God has been so great. He's put me in a place of victory outreach, a place where I call home and the people I call family. You know, wonderful place in the body of Christ. Now, I mentioned how I went to the home there, our Victory uh, Recovery Homes there, and uh, mine was 34 years ago, and uh, I thank God. And I went in there, they prayed for me, laid hands on me, speaking in tongues, shaka laka laka, and all that stuff was there praying. And um, I didn't know what was going on, but that day I got delivered from nicotine. I thought that was going to be harder than coke or heroin or meth, you know. But boom, that day, it's been 34 years, you know. God does deliver, and God does set free. I'm in the home there. I'm a few weeks there, saved. But now I know, in the back of my mind, the moment of truth is coming. Okay? It's when this... It's one thing to say, oh, praise the Lord, I'm a Christian, hallelujah, you know. And in those days, we had a lot of car washes, and we'd be in the corner, in the victory area, car wash, you know. And then they tell me, hey, hey, Conejo, let's go to the car wash. He's calling me Conejo still. Conejo, let's go to the car wash, you see. And I go, what's that, I say, you know. Just, just come, bro, check it out, you know, get some fresh air. All right, and, um, but... <laughs> To me, I was well-known, and I was like a ghetto fabulous, right? So I said, okay, I'll do this, you know. So I went out there, there over there, Victor Harry's car wash and all that stuff, you know. Make a long story short, I'm waiting for the moment of truth to come, and it comes. It always comes when you least expect it. I'm there drying cars, you know, enjoying the sunny day. Here comes that car, two fellas in it. Drop dead killers. They're gone now, but then they were much alive. They come right to me. The window goes down. And when I have a cigar, and I know I'm, I'm, just, I'm just feeling cold, mm -hmm. heavy like a rock. All I could think about is I'm going to die here in a car. Let's tour. <laughs> I expected to die. Maybe a shootout. Or 
a fight in the yard or something, all right? But not at a stupid car wash, you know? The mind is funny, but it's real time. There's no pause. It's on. And they asked me a question I knew was coming. It was my moment of truth. They told me, sick one at home. What's up, is there? I'm a Christian. Hmm. In my mind, I'll be honest, I was just thinking, you know, come on, say something clever or something, you know, come on, stupid, say something. You know, I was just a, to get the police off me or the pull offs or something. I couldn't think of anything. I was stuck. And it seemed like minutes, but it was just seconds. You know, time stops. And I'm right there, and they're just looking at me, you know, the cigar. And I'm thinking, well, this is stupid right here. Something has to happen, you know. And I, what it was, I couldn't deny the reality of what happened to me when I called upon the name of the Lord. I couldn't deny that I wasn't smoking no more. I couldn't deny that I was free from drug. I couldn't deny that, you know. And above all, I couldn't deny him. But I was stuck because these guys, too, you know, they're not coming for a Bible study. Hello, somebody. They're coming to put me in check, you know. What's up, you know? Because it's not good. But God helped me. This is what he told me many, many years ago. He told me, Art. He never called me Conejo, by the way. Art. For 17 years, and in all those years, you're willing to put your life on the altar of the mafia. On the altar of sacrifice. Your wife, your children, your time, your life, your youth, on the altar. And you're willing to die, consume it all. For really for Satan, who was your God. Really for yourself, your pride, your image. Can you die for my son? Can you die for my son? I go, mm. I go, wow. Now look at, if I would have said anything else but Yes, in my heart, I couldn't look at you right now. I could not look you in the eye if I would have said anything else. If I would have said, hey, it's all good. <laughs> Thank you, you got me out of prison. You got me out of drugs. If I need you, I'll holla. You know, but no, I couldn't. I'm, I don't know, I'm just not built that way. I knew then whatever, the next thing that comes out of my mouth would define my destiny. I knew it. You guys are going to just, you know, get gunned down there like a dog or just live as a coward and you know denying the Lord in my heart I couldn't do that and God helped me he gave me a peace he gave me his courage really his grace because I was just feeling cold heaviness fear I said this is it you know and then what I said in my heart first I confessed verbally with my mouth I told him, you know what, check this out, I said, I'm a Christian, I said, I'm staying right here in Big Traffic. You know what I expected next, right? <laughs> Boom! Tell that to Jesus, fool. Oh. That didn't happen. Hallelujah. I'm here today. Amen. It's been 34 years, and I've been able to share this message, you know, around the world, you know, coast to coast in many cities and countries and nations, you know, about the re reality and truth, you know, about Jesus Christ. And uh, once I said that, you know what happened? No gun, not, not even a shout. They, you know, I, they looked at each other. I think it was the fear of God came on that vehicle there at the car wash. The other brothers didn't have a clue, you know. Sometimes God does that. They don't have a clue. What's, nobody even knows or cares, you know. But God does. And they look at each other. I think it was the fear of God, Doctor, mm -hmm. came upon them. And then the window goes up. And the car takes off. And I see them go. They go out of sight around the corner. And then I get all, of course, courageous. That's right, fool. You know, better back up. Really? I know it was God. You know, of course, they didn't see me do all that drama. But it was God that saved me. When they should have blasted me. There's bullets in my body, stab wounds, like many of you. I'm not bulletproof, that's for sure. But by the grace of God, 
I've been able to do what I've been doing for many, many years. Amen? There's a scripture that says that too, that whatever I tell you in the dark, proclaim on the housetops. Proclaim in the light. God reached me as a treasure out of darkness. Amen? And then I tell people everywhere I go, you know, don't worry about, you know, trying to shine. Just walk into the darkness. You'll shine. There is a hurting world out there. Don't fear those who could destroy the body, and that's all they'll be able to do. But rather fear him who could destroy both soul and body and cast both into hell. If you want to fear somebody, fear the everlasting God. Amen? As I mentioned before, I stand before you here as a man, you know, once under the wrath, the judgment of God. I had nothing coming but the fierce wrath of God. Come on, let's keep it real, you know. I knew that. And again, how can I look you in the face and stand before you here, people, as a man now under the mercy of God, the forgiveness of God, the grace of God? The favor of God. Is that real? Yes, it's real. And you're looking at real evidence. What kind of evidence? The evidence of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says, Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the Father. Look at Joy and cross, <laughs> those are oxymorons, you know. Those words don't go together. It's like a kosher hog, you know. It's no such thing. Gay marriage, no such thing. It's an oxymoron. doesn't happen, you know. But I stand before you. And then the Lord said that. Who for the joy of the Lord endured the cross. The cross is excruciating pain and shame and spit and horror. The horrible death. And you know what? He endured it. And you know what? Every step that the Lord is taking up that painful, bloody, dusty cross 2,000 years ago, Golgotha, you know who, what the joy of the Lord was? You. This dog. You, my brother, my sister. Every thought, your name. The name of Danny. The name of Reuben. the joy. I'm doing this for them. Something good is coming out of this. I thank God. That's the reason I'm here. And I want to end with this quick, quick story. True story. When I was in San Quentin and it has to do too with the cross. It was salvation. When I was in San Quentin on uh, North Block, that's where they house death row. We go downstairs. You have to go. If you get a visit, see the lawyer. There was, the gas chamber was there. There was two chairs, A and B. A and B, two chairs. Now it was lethal injection. Then it was the gas chamber. And uh, the cops would even tell me, hey, Art, we got your, they're already ready for you. A and B, Art Blahos, mm -hmm. you know? I go, oh, you dirty dogs, you know? <laughs> That's not for me, you know? But it would haunt me, you know? A, B. Art Blahos, two, they call it the green killing machine. And I said, oh, wow. But you know what? I'm here to tell you that, and remember I told you in the other segment that I fought almost five years in the Los Angeles County Jail for my life? They would say stuff like this, that this man right here is beyond. I mean, he can't be rehabilitated. Big words then, I didn't know what it meant. They would even say he's beyond redemption. No, but I stand before you rehabilitated, and I stand before you redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, you know? So they were wrong, you know? All the experts and the professionals, they don't have the last word. The one who has the last word, the first and the last word, is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. All that's really important is what he says about you. Now listen, the gas chamber. Somebody did go to the gas chamber for me. They did go. And that somebody died. And he was dead. 
three days. But on the third day, he arose from the dead. Yes, he paid for my sins. While I was, the Bible said, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. That's right, unsaved, defying God, this great merciful Savior, Jesus Christ, went to the gas chamber, took my penalty, and died. I mean died, rigor mortis, dead. Ooh. But on the third day, hallelujah, on the third day, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, rose from the grave. The rock had to be moved aside, and he walked out alive and living, as he is right now, full of glory, power, grace, and forgiveness. And if you're right there, my friend, my brother, my sister, I don't care who you are, how much work you put in, all the dirt you've done, does it matter? He paid the price for you. And the Bible says that too, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Listen, and it says this, that if you confess me before men, hallelujah, like I had to make a confession there at the car wash. If you confess me before men, then I'll confess your name before my Father in heaven and his holy angels. Wow. How can you neglect so great a salvation? How can you escape? You won't. The window for that opportunity is open maybe right now. And tomorrow isn't promised to anyone. You don't know if you're going to wake up tomorrow. There's a window right now open for you to call upon his name. And if you call upon his name, he'll confess your name to his father. Wow. My name? Yes, your name. He knows your name. He'll con he's waiting to confess your name once you first confess and admit that you are a sinner, that you need him. Ah, but here's the final part of that. If you deny me before men, then I'll deny you before my Father in heaven. Huh, that's a horrible, horrible sentence. That's, a, that's eternity. Eternity. I'd rather spend 80 years, you know, SHU, Max Security, Pelican Bay, the worst prisons. 80 years. Then hell for eternity. Don't deny him. He paid the price for you. Remember, who for the joy of the Lord <laughs> endured the cross, despising the shame for you, my brother. What a loving God. Amen? And he's able to set the captives free, open the prison doors, make the crooked places straight. That's what he wants to do right now and give you the peace of God that passes all understanding. If there was a time to confess him, it is now. That's, that's the reason you're looking right now, hearing my voice. Call upon him while there is still time. You know we're living in wicked times. I mean, the life, as you know, it is changing rapidly, you know. They're calling evil good and good evil. The day of salvation is now. Judgment is coming to the world. But hallelujah. If you call upon his name, judgment will pass you. Death will pass you. And all you have to look forward to is life and life more abundant. Amen? They tried to kill me in the gas chamber, and but because of the Lord, death had to bow down. Death had to back off. You're looking at a man that was once addicted to heroin, coke, meth, you know, nicotine. Pornography, tobacco, all those things, just like you. It could be ice, even fentanyl. He'll take care of that. Call upon his name today or there is yet time. Amen. Doctor. Amen. You know, you were saying that this is called the green room. We're sitting in the green room, right? And Ooh. you were saying back then when you were in the joint, they called the gas chamber the green room. And the enemy was lying to him and telling him, that green room was for him, that that was death for him. But here God has you sitting in the green room, speaking life to his people. Yep, you ended right. up in the green room, right. alive and well forevermore. Wow, <laughs> that's right, huh? That's and you know, good. And you know, you say, and here's proof, here's evidence. But, you know, God told me last night when I was praying, heaven, heaven dense. 
We got heaven dense, right? Mm. Amen. We got heaven dense, heaven dense, right? We got Amen. heaven dense. Christ sitting on the right hand side of the Father is our heaven dense, right? He died and he resurrected, resurrected heaven dense, right? Mm. And so we got that as our evidence, right? <laughs> I love that. That is so and That's good. so powerful. And whatever you need, whatever it is, whatever you're asking God, go ahead and ask God. If you don't know how to pray, you know what? We just want to pray with you right now before we close. And Father, we just thank yes, you, Father, Lord. for the thank word you. that went forth, Lord God. Father. We thank you, Lord God, for setting the captive free. Lord, we thank you for that one, Lord, that has never called upon your name, mm. Father. We thank you, Father, for them speaking the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord God, for touching them and filling them, Father God, with your Holy Ghost power. Yes. We thank you for renewing them, for regulating yes. their mind, God. We thank yes. you, Father God, for turning their yes, hearts Lord. violently, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for that from now on, on, Lord God. They won't be the same, Lord. We thank you, Lord God, that you have come in this day, God, and that you have wrecked yes. the plans of the enemy, Lord. We thank you that you have made their crooked path straight this yes. day, God. Yes. We thank you that you have flattened the mountains this day, God. Mm. We thank you that you have made the yes. rocky places yes. smooth yes. this day, Father God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have took them through, Father, that you have sustained them. The Lord wants you to know that he has kept you and that he has sustained you yes. and that his hand's been along on you all yes. along, even yes. when you were doing that or you're in that right now God wants to know you to know that he loves you God wants you to know that his hands upon you and God wants you to know that he forgives you God says that he takes your sin and throws it as far as the east is from the west God says that he takes your sin and throws it behind his back so don't go behind his back and go grab that sin anymore just repent before the Lord say father forgive me for my sins come into my heart and as soon as you do that God's going to change you he's going to reposition you God's going to stand you up on your feet there's a scripture mm. that says in Malachi, uh, Micah 7, 8, don't gloat over me, my enemies, though I fall, I shall rise again. And this is your yes. time to rise right now. Amen. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed and the... Also, really report. quick, doctor, if you are if you need help right now, you've got Christian Recovery Home for men and women. Just call. Amen. The information. And they'll come today for you. Amen. A victory outreach, victory right? Outreach. Victory yes. outreach has men and women homes. I know uh, Living Word Chino Hills has uh, uh, men and women homes, and you can just check it out and go. And right there, God will change your life. Amen, and God bless you. Amen. The preceding program was brought to you by the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, HSBN Television.